All right, everybody, we're back with some more Day of the Tentacle Remastered. Last time, uh, Bernard, Laverne, and Hoagie got split up through time in the Chronogon, and now we have to figure out how to get them back. And I'm surprised I ever got out of there alive. As am I. In order to do that, we have to... Shock top. I any more trouble. I've had shock top before. It's not too bad. It can't do anything without a new diamond. Well, need a diamond for the time machine. I'm still getting used to the new control layout a little bit. Maybe I put them upstairs. That's got to be it. Upstairs. Well, he's still looking for his plans. And it's a little late, but I always did this just just because I thought it was funny. There, it's off, but it's too late now. Well, got a hamster generator. It looks like a generator driven by a treadmill. Hmm. That might become important later. It's Dr. Fred's design for a super battery. It's capable of storing up to one gigavolt with a charging time of only 0.01 seconds. Wow! That's a hell of a battery. I've got the plans. Quick! What? You have to flip Wait. them to Hoagie. How did you get over there? That's a good question. My ingenious super battery design, please. You really flushed them. Yes! Down the toilet. No, through time. <laughs> Using the highly sophisticated time flux hydraulic vortex chamber I've installed in each chronogen, you can flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Isn't that flush convenient? Small inanimate objects to each other through time. Hello, Doctor Fred. Can you hear me, Drat? Did you hear something? No. Let's see if <laughs> what's-his-name catches on. Oh, great. I'm stuck in colonial times. Tentacles are taking over the world. And now the toilet's backing up. Okay. Come over here. It's your old pal, Dr. Fred. Dr. Fred? How'd you get in there? I want you to pick up those plans you see in the Chronogon, Hoagie. Bring them to Red Edison. He's my great, 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 great grandfather. He'll know what to do. You need the plans to make a super battery so you can plug in your Chronogon. Okay, if you say so, Bernard. Good boy. Does he have any experience with electronics? Um, well, I once saw him take 3,000 volts directly through his head without batting an eye. Didn't he pass out? Well, he was already passed out when it happened. <laughs> Time for me to save the world, I guess. Yes, that, that feature's going to be very important. And that, yeah, that's a hell of a lot of power for a, a battery, isn't it? Let's see, what did Hogan... Hoagie has a can opener, and now he has the patent application. So let's see if we can find Red Edison. Is he in the john? Huh, this door appears to be locked. Nope. Oh, actually I didn't look at it. Grody. <laughs> Grody. Ye oldy outhouses. Got a kumquat tree. Kumquats. Ah, clicked out of the window. There's the path. Meanwhile, how about an amendment that the president has to be a human being? Please, this is serious business. You're right. <laughs> So we've got an in here. It looks pretty much the same as Dr. Fred's motel. 
I don't think there's anything we can do over here, but let's waddle over and take a look. Holy shit, Ben Franklin. If you think I'm something to look at now, just wait. Hi there, mister. Franklin, Ben Franklin, soon to be known as the inventor of electricity. Uh, do you know Red Edison? He's a scientist guy, too. Red Edison? A scientist? He's just an innkeeper who pretends to be a scientist, and he's not very good at doing either one. I can't believe Washington and Jefferson picked his inn, of all places, to write our Constitution. That's, uh, that's kind of cold-hearted. Pretends to be a scientist in a hotel here. It isn't good at either. Shouldn't you say, the discoverer of electricity? You think the ultimate power in the universe is just under some rock waiting to be discovered? Ha! I, Ben Franklin, I'm going to summon power from the sky by sheer force of genius. <laughs> you are truly whacked. You are truly whacked, Ben. Huh, that's what they said about the man who invented bifocals. Wasn't that you? Good point. Guess they were right. <laughs> I wonder what Red would say about that. Who cares about that crackpot? I need Red to help me save humanity. So he's a missionary now, eh? Well, why not? Can't be any worse at that than he is at inventing. Damn! So where's this Red guy at? Down in his secret lab, of course, neglecting his guests. What's so bad about Red? What can you say about a guy who spent the last four years perfecting a left-handed hammer? He's insane. And he steals other people's inventions, too, before they can even apply for the patent. Not that I'm bitter. <laughs> let, let that sink in for a second. A left-handed hammer. Aren't you the hundred-dollar guy? Hmm, the hundred dollar guy, not bad. Well, see ya. Carry on. Enough of this. Let's go inside. We got a carriage here. It's totally covered with crud. See, is there anything out here? There's a mailbox. Anything in it? There is. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. That could be important. For now, though, let's head into the inn. Got a mummy behind the counter. Cool, the room clerk's a mummy. Can we push the mummy? That would not be respectful. <laughs> Besides, I might get caught. <laughs> What's up? Don't feel like talking, huh? Vow of silence or something, probably right. Well, that's cool. I have something for Red Edison. Do you know where I could find him? <laughs> Great hat, man. I know some dudes in a band who'd eat roaches for hats like that. <laughs> insensitive spittoon. They're called insensitive spittoon. They play funk, punk, folk, polka, house, grunge rock. Now that is a niche genre. They're heavily influenced by bands like Limpid Harmonica and Howling Moon Rocket Limbo. Well, nice talking to you, dude. Now, he said Red Edison is probably in his secret lab. We know the secret lab is in here. It's 
So Thomas Edison sounds like a character from the old Cartoon Network shows around Boomerang, but I don't remember the character. Hmm. I'll have to, I'd have to IMDB the uh, the voice actor. I don't know. I think he was a captain. Hmm. Not sure. Well, here's Red Edison. He seems busy. Let's talk to him. Hey, what is it? You look kind of familiar. Of course I do. I'm Red Edison, the inventor. Not to mention owner of this inn. Perhaps you've seen my picture in some important scientific journal. Nope. Then again, maybe not. <laughs> Do you know Ben Franklin? Franklin? Huh. I would never associate with that overstuffed goofball. He has the stupidest idea about glasses with one red lens and one blue one. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm inventing you, simpleton. What's it look like I'm doing? Well. What are you inventing? It's a piece of paper that will stick to things by itself. Rather ingenious, if I must say so myself. Hmm. Well, he said, I wonder what does he say inventing? the same thing? It's a piece of paper yeah, that does. will stick to things by itself. Rather ingenious, if I must say so myself. I know an inventor who looks a bit like you. Well, it's not one of my sons, that's for sure. It appears that I, Red Edison, foremost genius of my day, am to be the last in a long line of gifted inventors. My nearly indistinguishable sons have decided that they want to be artists. I think it was Jed's idea. Or is it Ned? Ah, well, the left-handed one at any rate. Must be some sort of bad blood on their mother's side. <laughs> well, see you later. You might if you cut that hair a bit shorter. Leave my hair alone. All right, you need this. Hmm, super battery, eh? Brilliant design. Sometimes I amaze myself. Now all I need is oil, vinegar, and some gold. Yes. Oil, vinegar, and gold. Just looks like a regular hammer to me, but then I'm no scientist. Can we... Say, that's a left-handed hammer, you know. I invented it myself. It was for my ungrateful slob of a left-handed son. Oh, well. So we have yoinked the left-handed hammer. And a lab coat over here. It looks more like a raincoat than a lab coat. Yoink. Hey, only employees are allowed to use that lab coat. Hmm. Um, we'll have to keep that in mind. It's covered with plans and junk. Let's head back upstairs. And what's in the main hall? Well then. The Constitutional Convention invites your comment, critiques, amendment to the Constitution. Hmm. Yeah, John Hancock over here. Must have poor circulation. And uh, we will talk to you, John Hancock, and... Thomas Jefferson in the next video. Thank you, Hoagie.